Yo. This is the inflection collective. All of us are connected, reflective, real life perspective, respected. The banter, the chit chat, no cap, it's big facts, so kick back. This here is done there, been there. It's time for another tantalizing episode of Done There, Been That. I'm Eunice Elliott. I'm Mike Kill. Tantalizing. I love that. We have been tantalizing a little bit over the last uh, couple of weeks, the first two weeks. Happy to be here with you, Eunice. Yeah, I'm super excited to be back here with you again, Mike. Uh, shout out to everybody who has been listening to the podcast. We're just in week three, so that means we are just getting started. I have been enjoying the feedback, positive and negative, I will say overwhelmingly positive as far mm-hmm. as, hey, we enjoy these kind of conversations. The negatives I handled in my stop doing that last week. What about you? No, What's been your Here's feedback? the thing about the negatives. The negatives uh, come with the territory too because a lot of times when you have an opinionated show, people aren't going to agree with you and they have a certain way of telling you they don't agree with it. So I look at the negative as somebody like, you got your opinion. Your opinion ain't really worth the damn, but you still have a right to your opinion. But like you said, I focus on the uh, the positives, too, because I've had a lot of people that have come up to me just out of the blue. Hey, I love your podcast with you and you and this, y'all killing it. Keep on doing it. So that's just two weeks in. So let's keep this thing rolling. And I understand we we actually, they, you know, I, I think uh, Inflection Entertainment the Network likes us because now we got our own YouTube channel now. We have our own YouTube channel. We do. Done there, been that. Make sure you subscribe. So that way, if you're not like just driving, listening to us, you can also See us. I feel like uh, over the last couple of weeks, and, and people that don't understand our background, we actually had a conversation about this. I'm just going to let people behind the, what do they call that, the curtain a little bit. Uh, the two of us have been knowing each other for over 25 years, but a lot of people don't know that we don't know each other like that because we don't conversate or talk over a period of time. We have just known each other for a long period of time in, in places here and there. So I think some people may look at the back and forth that we have and misconstrue it we might even misconstrue it a little bit too but we had a conversation about that and uh, i just want to let everybody know that eunice is a phenomenal woman she is uh, talented as hell i am so proud of her and just because we disagree sometimes does not mean that you know we don't care for each other i don't care which i don't know if she's saying to her friends but i tell my friends that yeah she's still my, she's still my people yeah. what mike said <laughs> I think you know what I think I think people aren't um well versed in healthy discourse and so I think a lot of times especially on social media whenever someone shares an opinion people don't I don't think have a grasp on the art of being able to have a healthy discourse meaning I might not agree with you but I'm not going to attack you personally I'm not right. going to be offended I'm a very empathetic person so I can usually understand everybody's point of view even though I have mine and it doesn't mean I agree with you. I can say, I understand why you feel that way. I don't feel that way, but I see how you came to that. And I'm not going to argue with anybody about their feelings. And, about and you should, you but anyway, should. talking about feelings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Talking about feelings, talking about emotions, talking about mental health. I think mm-hmm. nowadays uh, it's less of a stigma, but we have been so far behind addressing mental health. And I think sometimes when, you even use the term, I need to focus on my mental health. People think something's wrong. Well, that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. It's just like if you said you were going to the gym, it doesn't mean you're sick. It just means you're working on your physical health. Right. So we're going to talk about mental health a little bit right now with our first topic, which is Draymond Green. Mm. He has been suspended uh, by the NBA for, uh, is it is the suspension for the last offense or do you is it an it's, accumulation of offenses an, why he has been definitely suspended. for an accumulation this is the reason why he got suspended indefinitely this Draymond Green has uh had several suspensions throughout his career including in the NBA finals he's been uh, ejected out of three games out of the 15 games he's played one time he got suspended early this year for choking Rudy Gobert uh and then the last one Yusef Nurkic where he just basically turned around and and beat the hit not the hell out of him for <laughs> just just for uh, simple purposes there. So yeah, it's an accumulation of his uh, his past behavior. The reason why he's been suspended indefinitely. Now there's a report that came out uh, today that said that he might be out uh, up to three to four weeks because he has started counseling and he understands that his behavior can't continue to go if he wants to continue to play in the NBA. So that's the start. And so that's all we can hope for any of us is that. We recognize there is a challenge or an issue and that we seek uh, things that can help us adjust those challenges. I think what's interesting about Draymond's um, situation, though, and it's how it segues into life. I've seen people um, 
you know, say that, well, just because he's like that in a game doesn't mean he has a problem or that he needs to get counseling. Some people say some people are just fiery and competitive. Um, I have known athletes who have been ordered to get anger management by their team because mm-hmm. there's a fine line or there isn't such a fine line. Everybody out there that's an athlete, you're competitive, you're hungry, you can taste the blood in the water, you want to finish them. I think that's all understood. It crosses that line though. And I think was concerning to me about Draymond and it makes me curious about how does he handle challenges and frustrations personally ain't my business. I will make no assumptions, but when you have already been ejected, gotten as many technicals, you know, the eyes are on you anyway for your behavior. If you can't control yourself in the next moment in front of an audience, in front of a crowd, in front of TV cameras, it makes you wonder like, how is he handling his challenges in private? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we also saw or does how it he's not handling make you that. certain things that he's handling even behind closed doors, even when he's not on television. I mean, remember, he got suspended by his team just last year for uh, knocking the hell out of pool. You know, his teammate, who's not long, no longer at practice, teammate, right? Him at practice in, in the video. But I mean, like people that. in his life, like family members. Yeah, yeah. But like like in private, you know, is he the guy that you don't want to play cards with because he's going to be ready to fight everybody at the party? Like, I'm curious, how does that translate? in his in, personal life outside of basketball. We we haven't heard. I mean, from what I understand, I've been around Draymond a little bit. I can't say I know him, but I think we know of each other. And he's always been cool. I think he just has this switch that kind of comes on when he's in the heat of competition. Uh, we see it when it comes to entertainers sometimes. You know, people like Beyonce, Prince, they were introverts. Uh, Prince was an introvert. Beyonce's an introvert. But when she gets on stage, she becomes Sasha Fierce and she gets into that moment. I think with Draymond, like you mentioned, there is a competitive spirit that he has that people he needs. He needs that edge because he, although he's a great player and he's good to his team, he's not an all star or all pro caliber player. So he has to play with that edge. But when it goes over the line where it starts not affecting just you, but affecting your teammates and you're not available to your team, then it's a little bit too far. But we're talking about that edge. So as a person that we've been here before, we have different personalities. I know you have a personality of your own, uh, especially when you got into the broadcast industry uh, as a TV morning anchor. We've both been in situations where, just like you was talking about Draymond, there are people that want him to play with their fire. But where is that line? And when people are trying to control you, how far do you allow them to control you? Because I know I got plenty of stories over my 29 year career, but I'm curious to know because you came into the broadcast world and you were in Birmingham, Alabama. And I'm pretty sure that when you got there as a black girl in Birmingham, Alabama, even though it was in the two thousands or whatnot, there were still viewers out there that saw this beautiful, pretty little black girl with natural hair on the air and you may have gotten some pushback because this is your style, this is your edge, this is your personality, but your bosses are telling you, hey, we need you to be a little bit more of this. How did you handle that? I will say I was fortunate in that it didn't come from my bosses. It only came from the viewers. Now, I have colleagues in the business who have had it come from their bosses where like, hey, wear your hair this way or wear a wig, you know, if you were natural or something. That's not my personal experience. But the viewers would often let me know how they preferred I look. It might be, I don't like you in that color or, oh, you look horrible in that dress, you know. And I think anybody, that's fair game, right? So I never really had an issue with it personally. But I tell younger students in journalism, especially, you know, if you're good, they'll figure out how to accept what they're not used to. If you're Mm -hmm. great at your job, they may have never seen anything like it, but it ain't a conversation because I'm great at this. So I think that helped me a lot in that I was brought in as a personality hire, even though I had a journalism degree. And even though Mm -hmm. I had this, this background in communications, I had never been a TV news anchor before they put me on the air. And so I think I had that going for me in that I was there to be unique. And so sometimes it may have been my hair. Sometimes it may have been my thought process. It may have been a joke. It may have been my take on a situation. So that's not my personal situation. Now the viewers, they would call, they would send Facebook messages. Uh, but the only time I ever had um, my company in my last company talk to me was when um, 
there was a lot of racial unrest in the country. And mm. on my personal social media, I was sharing stories and situations about black people being unjustly harassed or murdered by police. And some of the white viewers took exception and started calling me a racist bigot mm. and calling the station and, and things like that. You know, um, So even when they would talk to me about what I was sharing on my personal page, I would say, I don't know that you can regulate that. And being black is a human interest story. You know, so you wouldn't yeah. say anything to me if I was posting about rescuing a puppy or if I was talking about cancer treatments. You right. can't say something to me when I talk about being black in America. So but that's probably the only time they ever tried to call me in the office completely. If you're not counting the time, they call me in the office and I quit. Other than that, never really got talked to about anything. Oh, look, <laughs> what, you, they called you in the office and you quit. I, I got to hear that story. Well, that's the only reason I quit my job. Yeah, I did a comedy sketch. And they were upset that I didn't ask for approval or get approval. And I explained to them, why would I get approval from you? You pay me to exclusively uh, be your TV anchor. Uh, but I do stand up. I do, you know, I write books. I do all these different things. And they wrote me up for doing all the different things. And at that point, I said, well, it was probably time for me to go. Yeah, uh, that's interesting because I, I've been in several situations like that before myself. When I was, uh, I knew it was time to get out of the military when, Certain people were trying to tell me certain things or call me certain names out of my name. Even though I was an airman, you cannot treat me like I'm not a man. And uh, that was a big issue. So I knew it was time for me to get out of there. That's interesting that you say that because uh, throughout my career, I've had several people. And we know how it is when you have these consultants who come in, especially these news stations. And their job is basically to tell you what sucks about you, what's wrong with yes. you. And remember... The consultants would not have a job unless they can find something wrong with you. So they got to find something wrong with you. It could be my mustache. Do you want to? Do you necessarily have to have facial hair? Yeah, I need to have facial hair. I want to be a black man. You know, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Or oh, do you have to sound like this? Do you have to say certain words like this? Uh, how about this? Do you fix your hair a certain way? I know a lot of female uh, colleagues get that. Black female colleagues get that all mm -hmm. the time or whatnot. I call them insultants because it is their job to insult you. But it doesn't just stop there. Like you said. A lot of times the viewers can say certain things, but even when I was at ESPN, I remember I got there. You know me, Eunice, I'm from Bessemer, Alabama. I have a certain style. I'm a black man. I'm a black journalist, whatnot. When I was in Dallas, I got fired because of that. Uh, I was asked, do you want to be a sportscaster? Do you want to be a black sportscaster by my boss? Being there. It was hard. To, yeah, it, it, I've been there. Uh, ESPN, I remember I got there and I had a certain style. This is the way I am. It's the way I talk. They told me, hey, you know what? The reason you're not moving up is because you're too ghetto. This is what a talent coordinator told me. He said, the reason why you're not moving up is because you're too ghetto and we already have one of them. And this is when the great Stuart Scott was already there. So yeah. I can understand there is a part of you that wants to be free. But at the end of the day, just like in the NBA, the NFL, there are codes, there are ethics, there are standards, it's their way. They always say it's not, it's not, a, 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 what do they say? It, it is not a right to play in the NFL or the NBA, it's a privilege. And I think at some of these companies, it's the same way. Not to say it is right, but I lost myself because of that. So when it comes to Draymond mm -hmm. Green, there is a line that he cannot cross because once again, it's not just hurting him, but he's hurting the image of the league, hurting the image of the Golden State Warriors. While I still want that fiery play, he's got to find out what is the compromise so that he can play the way he wants to play and be the man that he wants to be. Like you said, we don't hear anything off the court, which is a great thing. But at the same time, you got to find out where that line is and make sure you don't cross it. People like me, sometimes I'll get that line and I'll move that shit up <laughs> like two feet yeah. <laughs> because I'm yeah, never going to cross the line, but I'm going to move it up. But I think even in Draymond's case, so I, so I think when we're talking about our expenses with um, an image consultant, I, I remember one time an image consultant came in and he, he saw my hair, my natural hair out, and he stopped the tape, the video, and he says, are you good enough to get away with this hair? I said, I am. Continue. <laughs> he asked me, was I good enough to get away with it? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 you know, I feel like that kind of goes more in the line of they used to try to mandate what the athletes wore for travel or for arrival. Yeah. And you see, they kind of have backed off that. Everybody's got their own style. They realize, hey, we don't need to tell the guys they got to wear a collared shirt. Colleges still do it a bit uh, to try to manage that. But as far as Draymond, I think the line that I don't think is that blurry that he keeps crossing is, you can't punch people. Yeah, you can't kick people <laughs> in the neck. I don't think that's up for a lot of interpretation. I think it's, yeah. hey, you can't stop hitting people. people. Yeah. You can't choke yeah. them. 
That's it. Right. Stop doing that. Yeah. We'll put Draymond and I stop doing that segment. Stop yeah. choking people, Draymond. Dang, you play too rough. And, <laughs> and I do believe that there is that, once again, like we want to support Draymond because we see that edge. And like you, like you mentioned, I think there are certain things that you can get away with when you're not on somebody's air, when you're not on somebody's court, which I mean the NBA, mm-hmm. air meaning the broadcast. If you're playing pickup basketball, we see that all. I see fights all the time, pickup basketball. Right. That's just, oh, you see fights all the time in hockey. In hockey. But you know what? That, but they say that's part of the game in hockey, right? right? Which I always think right. is always a double standard because I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole because I don't want to be caught. I, I, I saw the rabbit in the hole before you went. You, you, you saw it. You already know where I'm going, but everybody out there understands where, where I want to go with that, but I'm not. But when it comes mm-hmm. to certain leagues, when it comes to certain organizations, like I said, there's a standard. We want you to be yourself. We want you to give that fiery attitude. We want you to bring that passion. But when your passion crosses the line, it's too much. When your personality crosses the line, it's too much. I know we, we're both doing stand You've been doing stand-up longer than I have. I know certain things that I say on that stage. I can't take that shit to Fox Sports. I can't do that. Right. I can't. So right. I, know, I know where that limitation is. And so as somebody that I, I, I as a fan of Draymond Green's, and the fan of uh, anybody else who has that kind of fiery attitude, like even Dennis Rodman back in the day, I hope he can find mm-hmm. it because he's too valuable not to be on the court for his basketball team right now. And let me say something about athletes specifically, and and I would say transferable ideas. Like, you know, we can't say what we say on stage in different settings, but a lot of times athletes, especially if they've been athletic from middle school high school, college, pros, they don't realize that their colleagues and teammates, they interact with them totally different than people interact with people. And I've seen athletes kind of offend people because you can be talking so much trash to your teammate. You can call him names because it's a fun rapport. We're talking trash. Mm -hmm. You say that to just somebody at the bank. It's like, oh my gosh, he just told me to get out his face you can say that to your yep. teammate that's guarding you you know what i'm saying like so it's sometimes it's those little moments where it's like hey you're in a unique situation where you guys go back and forth you have this engagement you you talk a certain way you can trash talk you're on the same team you love each other but how many fights do you get in football practice a day 13 15 yep. 25 <laughs> but wow. but they're teammates it's because they're passionate they're fiery maybe somebody covered them maybe somebody you know tackled them too hard or whatever. But sometimes those, those communication tactics don't transfer into just everyday world and people. One time, um, and this is really dating me, um, but y'all know I'm grown, grown and sexy. But we back when I was at ESPN, no. well, yeah, well, but this was a thousand years ago at ESPN. John Elway mm-hmm. came up to ESPN for something and everybody was so excited. The great John Elway and everybody's kind of around him. And the one thing I will never forget is he was talking and at some point, he licked his hand and rubbed his arm. And I was disgusted. What? Okay, now, an NFL quarterback, that's they lick their hands. Like, but mm-hmm. regular people mm-hmm. don't just lick your hand <laughs> while you're standing there talking. Yeah. So keep in mind, I'm watching everybody's hands. He's shaking, and I'm like, he licked his hand. He licked his yeah. hand. <laughs> it was yeah. like he was trying to, like, maybe get a, something off his arm or something, but it wasn't even a thought for him. But I've seen, the, you know, the quarterbacks lick their hands before they call for the ball, you know, behind. Because they want to get a better grip you. on the football. We get that. I don't know what kind of grip you want. But I would never forget on. when he did that. I was like, did he just lick mm. his hand? Did I shake it? Had he licked it before mm. I shook it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but those hey. are little things that if he licked his hand on a football field, it would not be a thought. Nobody would even think anything about it. But you said it in a TV yeah. studio licking your hand. I don't know. I was yeah. bothered. But anyway. Hey, you also, know what? That's Pat, why I, I, do, I do the fist bump. I, I've been doing the fist bump long before COVID. So that's what I'm that's saying. That's safe. I've but seen you know, people walk out the about, bathroom when I wash their hands. <laughs> and I'm sure it was probably, yeah, it was a dude, right? Well, yeah. I wasn't in the world. I had a man tell, I had a, well. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, some well, places have unisex restrooms. 4040 well, has unisex restrooms, you know. Yeah. But I, mean, I remember I, I dated a guy once who introduced this idea at one of my company functions. He was like, do y'all wash your hands every time y'all go to the bathroom? Because if I didn't get nothing on my hands, I don't want, and I was really sitting there like, wait, what is happening? <laughs> so no, everyone so doesn't he, wash your hands. He didn't touch anything. He like, Hey, let me just take it out. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I don't know how he was working that out. It was a gross thing. I don't know. What he, what he, 
I don't know. You went too far. Okay, Mike. So anyway, <laughs> but it, like, whether it's I'm just got a lot of questions. Whether it's um, things in sports that don't transfer, spitting, uh, pad, like it's a lot of things that just happen in the context of sports. Who's this? Are we talking about? No, well, you can't pat anybody. Come on, quit playing. Athletes okay. say, "Come on, let's get it, get some hustle." Well, it's not, it's not a thing. But I'm right. saying you wouldn't do that if you weren't playing. You wouldn't just spit, or you wouldn't, you know. So it's a lot of things that athletes do at work that do mm-hmm. not transfer into just being a human in polite, proper society. Yeah, and, and you know, but what, Draymond and, and, is not okay to choke nobody nowhere. It, you can't choke nobody. No, well, depending on what you can choke, so you can get away. But somebody gonna come choke on. See, you see how you always you in these rabbit Some, holes. Calm somebody down, gonna Mike. Choke you. I'm just saying, if if the, somebody deserved to be choked, then I get it. Somebody deserved to be punched, I get it. But Jordan Poole, from what I understand, didn't do. He just talked. So anyway, yeah, Draymond, what he's doing is way over the line. I'm, I'm Over the line. Kind of- We're happy he's getting counseling and you don't yeah. have to get suspended to get counseling. Counseling is a wonderful tool for any and everybody who has a brain or and, a heart or a mind. He, he understands everybody. he needs to get. So once again, like yeah. you started this whole conversation, we're going to move on. Mental health is a real thing. Doesn't mean that you're mm-hmm. crazy. Doesn't mean right. that you're you 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 you're a bad person. Mental health, when you go get therapy, means that you want to make yourself a better person. I don't think anybody's right. calling Draymond Green a bad person because, like you mentioned, I'm glad you brought it up. We haven't heard anything about off the court issues with him, just on the court mm-hmm. behavior, whatever that needs to be addressed. So, if he's going to therapy to make himself a better person, I think all of us could do the same because no one I know, I don't know about you, Eunice, is perfect. And we all need to do something yeah. that we can do to better ourselves so that we can better ourselves around other people as well. Yeah. And I think there's always been a stigma around therapy and counseling, particularly for um, African-Americans. They like pray about it, go to church and then particularly for African-American men. So hopefully this might be some great, wonderful uh, opportunity for Draymond to kind of be a champion, you know, go through the processes, learn, institute more, you know, better tools to deal with frustrations mm-hmm. and, and be an inspiration to everybody to, you know, figure out, Hey, okay, I have these triggers and I'm not, might not be handling the best way either. It worked for him. Maybe it can work for me. So hopefully we will see a win, win, win situation from his uh, challenge. So here's something I hope doesn't trigger you as we move on. Oh God. The word uh, trigger triggers me actually. <laughs> Don't allow <laughs> triggers to trigger you. Take away the triggers, then you won't have the triggers. That's the just, don't That's trigger. trigger. just don't say That's trigger. Just don't say trigger. Uh, you know who Kita Vaccaro is? Uh, she is the wife of um, Tyreek Hill from the Miami Dolphins. I don't know her Except personally. <laughs> could be the NFL's MVP this year, having a phenomenal season. Uh, his phenomenal year season. Great, though. His year off the field, it ain't like he just got married. <laughs> Applaud that, whatnot. Uh, and his wife is very supportive of him. But uh, Tyreek, I understand, just got hit with two paternity suits by women that are claiming that he has given them babies. Obviously, he's paying them, I understand, reportedly $2,500 a month. And the babies were both born this year. And he's been engaged since 2021. Now, I'm not going to get too far into that man's business about his relationship that he has with Keita Vaccaro and how Keita Okay, Vaccaro, let's see. Let me see what you have no, to say. Let me see what you have to I'm, say. <laughs> all, all, I'm, all I'm saying is like, if you're in that situation, how do you handle that, Eunice? I mean, like, because obviously she got married, she's still supporting him. As a matter of fact, when he got injured last week, he said the reason he went back into the game, and I thought about this, it made me think a little bit. He said he went back into the game because he said his ankle was hurting really bad. And he texts uh, his wife then and said, hey, it's hurting really bad. She said, uh, you need to get your ass back in that game. And made me think, okay, well, yeah, you need to get your ass back in the game. Because she basically saying, you need to go make that money so you can pay these women over here. And <laughs> you can also hold on to me. Now, he is under the four-year, $120 million contract. Shout out to Tyreek Hill. If you got it, you can handle it. And you're paying for mm, Do your thing. But here's a question. And this is going to start. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say if you can pay it and you handling it, do your thing? If you if you can if you can pay it, you handling it and your wife. I can't. I ain't going to say nothing. Who am I to say anything about that? That's not my that's my personal issue. So I can't. So whatever they got arranged, that is totally on them. Now, I know most women I know would, you know, 
when I, but then also I don't know a lot of women that's married to a man that's making 120 million dollars. I'm just saying it could. I think a lot of times. Okay, so no, times, no to all of this. No, to okay, all of this. no, 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 no. I'm not saying you or any of your friends. I'm saying I no, have been I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about me. Okay. I'm talking about Tyreek. Okay. So here's here's my question. Okay. In okay. your introducing even the story, you started out by talking about his wife. You even called her mm-hmm. by name. But this mm-hmm. is not his wife's story. This is a Tyreek Hill story. But what people, society, social media, they do is they think, well, why would this woman marry him? Why is this woman saying staying with him? We don't focus on the him that has created this scenario. So this is actually a Tyreek Hill story. This isn't a Tyreek Hill's new wife story. This is a Tyreek Hill story. He has three children with an ex. He has these two new children. Uh, None of his five children are from his current wife, but even though he's been with her, they've been engaged since like 2021 or so. So this is a Tyreek Hill story because whether it's the new wife whether it's one of the two new baby mamas or even the first baby mama, you have to have some kind of understanding that Tyreek Hill has probably not been honest with everyone in real time. Could we agree that that's probably (laughs) true? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm asking, I'm just asking, I'm asking, can we all say Tyreek probably has not been truthful with, if not one, if not two, if not three, if not four of these women, I say can say because not definitively because I don't know the arrangements with people like and, and that's where I was going. But just there as a are, as a human, as, just as, as a, a human, human thinking person, I would think there has been mm-hmm. some deception there <laughs> at one time or another. That's it. Uh, that's all. Okay, so that's it. That's it. But, so but when people who, who then look deceiving? at the women, they're like, "Why would she?" Well, he's deceiving himself by making poor choices. Okay, and he has to have probably again. Probably, allegedly, I would assume he has not been 100% honest with his fiance. I would assume he has not been 100% honest with either of these baby mamas who just had babies this year. And then it gets turned onto the women. A lot of the headlines were like, you know, these two baby mamas want their child support increase. And then the gold digger labels start getting thrown out and all those things. And it's like, but still, this is not their story. This is Tyreek Hill's story, a situation that Tyreek Hill created a situation that financially Tyreek Hill is being responsible for. These women are pretty inconsequential to the whole story because guess what? If it wasn't baby mama number one, two, or three, you Mm -hmm. would still have Tyreek Hill making these type decisions and choices. There would be three other women because it's a Tyreek Hill story. Here's my response. Now for his wife, his wife, I understand. I don't know. Once again, I feel like in all of this, Maybe she's the one that you feel a little sorry for because, like you said, maybe there was deception. I don't know. Maybe Tyreek has that kind of relationship where he's like, hey, you know, I'm doing this. You know what kind of person I am? I got five kids already. My name is the Cheetah. I mean, that's my nickname. So <laughs> maybe that just isn't just because I'm fast. I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. He could have. Okay, and you she don't already know. Knows okay, that. you don't know. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, not that I'm speaking about that because, you know, I'm not talking about my bad. But anyway. So when it comes to it, I was going to say talking about triggered, you talk about triggered, who's going to be triggered in this story? No, I'm not triggered. I'm not triggered about it. I understand. I I don't don't answer to every label that I'm called, but I understand. I once won, always won. Here's the thing. But when I look back, so we're talking about who's to blame here or who's been deceived. Not even who's to blame. It's not even about who's to blame because I don't think this is about a blame thing. Who's responsible for creating this scenario? Okay, let's, who let's is talk responsible about it for creating this let's, scenario? Let's who, who is so that? So Tyreek, overall, because he is the one. Right. Um, obviously, he's the one that uh, common denominator. He's the common in denominator all, in, in all, all these women's these. lives. He's the mm-hmm. one that married his wife. He's the one that got these other allegedly. Because I don't, I don't know if they had a paternity test or whatever. But if he's they have the had money, paternity have, test, that's why he's paying the twenty five hundred dollars a month. Okay. But now he wants okay. to dispute so, them. But go on. So, so that could be court ordered and all that type of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I understand he signed a four year one hundred twenty million dollars. Okay, so what were we talking about last week? So when it comes to deception, there has to be, and we're talking about cheaters because I actually had this uh, conversation the other day. Uh, People want to know, women always want to know, why do men cheat? I'm like, okay, well, there are numerous reasons why a man cheats. Maybe the question that needs to be asked is, what can stop a man from cheating? Hmm? Oh, that's a really good question. That's a great question. Now, let me ask you that question based on that question. Can Hmm. you stop a man from cheating? Uh, yeah. You know how you can stop a man from cheating? 
not you Yellow? being cheated on. Well, that that's one thing. We'll cut it <laughs> off, you know, which could send you to jail for a long period of time unless you live in one of those countries that allow you to cut it off if he done something wrong. I understand that. But how do you stop a man from cheating on you? There you is can't. also a, another party that's involved. So while a lot of the heat goes to the man, right? While a lot of the heat goes to the man because he deserves the heat, he's responsible, he's accountable, there is another side of the equation that allows him to cheat. If there was not that side, and I'm not blaming them, so stop, I know people want to come, but if they also got the heat, the women who are the side chicks or the women who know, if you know, no, are you seeing shake your head? I'm, I'm, you asked me the question, so I'm giving you the answer. There is the other side. So if you can stop that from happening and also put the heat on them as well, maybe, maybe it would, maybe it would decrease. A Let me bit. ask you a question. If a man cheats, who is responsible for him cheating? It's the man. He's the, he's ultimately responsible. Once again, he's the common denominator. It's the woman, it's the woman or the man, whoever decides to cheat. They are responsible. They need to take accountability. All right. Okay. Well, you were talking about the side chicks make it make it available to cheat. You're saying these women out here who make themselves available to men who are in committed relationships. And so I was trying to see, were you offering some responsibility on the cheating on the women that they're cheating with or the men they're cheating with, whoever is the other person? Is is, do they bear responsibility? Can, can, but how can the person true? who's not in the relationship be responsible for what you do in your relationship? Because you're part, it's almost like if it's, you're, you're an, you're an accomplice in a sense, like, okay, so I but, can but what responsibility do, does a person who's not in a relationship have to a relationship they're not in? What responsibility would they, There's, would they bear a hold for that? No, 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 no. I'm not saying they're, they're, no. Look, so I understand a lot of people who become the side piece or whatever. I'm not even going to say side chick, you side piece, or whatever. They don't feel like that's part of cheating. They don't feel like that's their cheaters or whatnot. Right. So I get that. Uh, but there is a bit of responsibility. If you know that person is in a relationship, if you know that person is married, if you know that person is committed in some kind of way, that person bears some responsibility in a, in a sense, not as much as the person who is actually cheating, but there is some responsibility. Because let me, you know why you know why that would not stop a man from cheating, uh, taking the right. other person out of the way because man they'll woman. find they're okay. So because then if they are a cheater, they will find someone else. You're not going to eradicate the entire world of every option, right? Oh, so oh. you might know that this person. Uh, wants your husband. You might know that this woman right here wants my man, and you know that this is this woman, and and you you get her taken care of, however you do it, legally or otherwise. I won't ask questions. That is not going to stop that man from cheating if he's a cheater. He's going to cheat with somebody else. So I'm, I'm you saying, can't I'm stop not. a man from cheating. There's nothing a woman can do, short of mur murdering the dude, that it can stop somebody who is going to cheat. Just like a man can't I, stop a woman who's going so to cheat. Let, if let someone it cheats, it, what I'm saying is, if someone cheats. They are going to cheat. If someone doesn't cheat, they don't cheat. And that means it could be a naked woman laying on the couch. They're going to say, girl, cover yourself up and get out. What I'm saying to you is the person, this, the side person has no responsibility in that cheater's relationship. How could they? If we use Tyreek Hill's situation, I don't know the two women he had babies with this year. Do I, do I think they knew he had a fiance potentially? Cause I think they've been a public couple since at least 2021. Do yes. I think if they said, Hey, I saw your Instagram and, and who's this girl, who's this woman? Can we imagine a world where a man says, yeah, that's not that. Or as you say, misrepresent themselves. Can we imagine a world that may have potentially happened? And, uh, two women ended up getting pregnant by him in the same year, having babies. Guess what? Everybody in the world could say, hey, I wanted a baby. My baby's going to be well taken care of. I win. Again, everybody has different motivating factors in their lives. At the end of the day, there was only one peen involved. And so that is the peen responsible. So he takes all the heat, all the responsibility. So like we, yes. we, were doing a pod, we did the podcast last week talking about how much you know. You said Googling people Google all the time and this and get your information, girl. There's no way mm -hmm. in the world that these women did not know this man was in a relationship engaged since 2021. Mm -hmm. 
there's no way. And so let's say they knew he was engaged and he still had sex with him and he got them pregnant. Mm -hmm. Again, that is 100% on him. That is 100% on him that he got these women pregnant. Either they discuss wanting to have babies together. Everyone knows how to make a baby. So I'm saying to you, if I'm the multi-million dollar man with a fiance or a wife and whatever, and I don't want to have babies, I'm the one that can make sure I don't have babies. And I don't want to go into the science of it, but I would know how to not make a baby. Mm, Okay. So I'm just saying, I, I'm not saying, I'm not disagreeing and saying that it's not the person's fault. I'm not disagreeing. Well, I'm not totally, even saying fault. I'm saying he created the scenario. He created the scenario. What you said, you said 100%. It Respect- is, it's responsible. Is responsible. Responsible, responsible is different than fault. Okay. Because again, his- everybody can be happy. This We're on the outside. We don't know if both of these women are happy. We don't know if, we don't know them. So fault makes it seem like someone's wrong. I'm saying okay, he's so, responsible for so, this scenario. So, so 100% responsible for that person. Yes. Okay. Okay. I disagree. Yeah. He's responsible that. for the I scenario. Dis- yes. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I, as a matter of fact, you know what? Here's the thing. So we're going to, we're going to start a poll. If you dis- if you believe okay. in units and saying that the person who cheats is hundred percent responsible for whatever happens after that person, that's fine. If there is another party that's involved, not saying that it's got to be 50, 50, it might be 90, 10, it could be 80, 20, but there is another party that's also responsible. If I know you're going to rob a bank and I'm like, Hey, I'll drive. <laughs> and I'll drive you after you rob your bank and I still take you home afterwards. Am I an accomplice? Am I going to you jail? Are. Yeah. I'm going to jail. You are. I'm, so, so, you are. But I'm, you I'm are. not responsible because I didn't rob the bank. But, but that's a, that's, that's not really the greatest, um, uh, analogy for this situation, because as far as the standards of the law, that's the standard that has been set by the law that if you, uh, if you break into my house and your two people break into my house and the homeowner shoots the person that I came in with, I'm going to get charged with that person's murder. Do you know that? Uh, so that's the standards that the law has set. No, I understand. What I'm saying I, to you is, what I'm saying to you is, when a person cheats, it might be five people they cheated with, it might be one person, it might be a person they ain't even met yet that they looking to cheat with. The cheater is 100 responsible for the cheating. Now, whoever they cheat with is collateral damage. And either they knew or they didn't know. But either way, they made no commitment to anybody in that relationship. The person who's cheating made a commitment. We were married or we're engaged. And maybe we've had a conversation of exclusivity is assumed. And again, we're assuming they have agreed to exclusivity. They maybe have not. That's what I said. It's not a fault thing because everybody in this storyline might be happy with their lot in life. We don't know. We're just saying from the outside looking in, it sounds messy. It sounds messy to have two babies in the same year from two different women and marry a different woman and have three kids with another woman. Sounds messy, but guess what? Everybody might be happy in their situation. We don't know that. But is the person who is impregnating people responsible for impregnating people? Yes. A hundred percent responsible for impregnating I'm, people. I, I, yes. I, no, 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 no. So we're, we're on two different things. Yeah. The, the, the cheating, cheating to is- impregnate, cheating to impregnate, cheating. But, okay. But just, so, just so if- do you, these probably are not the only two women he's cheated with. I don't know this man, but let's just I say <laughs> these are just the two that had babies this year. Right. And so what I'm saying is, yes, Tyreek is a hundred percent responsible for who he puts his penis in. That's true. Who the penis is being put in. They're there yeah. for whatever they, they are for. But mm. there's too many so they, instances they say, so they and say yes. sports. No, what I'm no, I'm not saying they um I don't see no assault or cases. So I'm assuming they said yes, willfully. So that's not the question. I've worked with a lot of athletes, and a lot of those athletes have had baby mama drama or girlfriend drama or stalker troubles and all the things, right? But when you are put in a certain position in your life where you're making millions and millions of dollars because you're really great at something, you have to move mentally into a different space to handle yourself in a more responsible manner because you have so much to lose. So I'm saying he is 100% responsible for this scenario. And it's unfortunate that the women will take the heat. Why did she marry him? Or why they gold diggers, whatever, versus this young man is not taking great care of his of, of this unique gift he has or the finances he had. And again, they all might be happy as a lark. You know, Nick Cannon and all his babies, they're presented as if we all wanted babies. We all knew about, you know, so they present that like they're happy. They're happy. And we don't know if that's the same kind of scenario. We don't know. Okay. So let me back it up. Cause you know, like you said, I don't know the situation. Obviously his wife knows the situation and she's cool with it. We don't know the whole thing. They could have an open relationship. So there's no cheating even involved could be in this situation. So, Let's go back real quick before we go too far down this rabbit hole, because I don't think we're going to agree on the responsibility aspect of it. 
the child support payments that he's making, just giving them $2,500, which I even say for a man that's averaging, making about $30 million a year, that's low for any child. If you got a child, you should be paying a little bit. I paid that much for child support, and I ain't never made $30 million a year. You know what I mean? So I mean, that ain't, ain't even know. paying the rent for right. a studio but, in most places. Okay, I understand that. But what's the responsibility of child support? It's child support. Now, one thing I will say about this is that you pay for your child. You take care and you support your child. And make sure all the needs, the wants of the child, schooling, they got the best housing or whatever. Make sure they got transportation, shelter, and all that type of stuff like that. It's what... When you get into the murky period of child support from a man or woman standpoint, because women have to pay child support too. So let me just throw that out there to make everybody feel inclusive. There comes a point where you're saying, I will take care of the child, but I'm not taking care of all of your needs. Meaning I'm not taking care of your girl's trip to the Caribbean. I'm not taking care of you and your man and the house that you want. Just because y'all got a four bedroom, and I think that's big enough for me and you and your my child. You live by yourself. You don't necessarily need an eight, nine million, uh, nine, nine uh, uh, bedroom mansion that costs ten million dollars, whatnot. Now, if you want that, your lifestyle should be part of your child's lifestyle. Hopefully, you have joint custody so that that person can be a part of that lifestyle at some point. So, when it comes to the point of like I'm seeing you driving the fanciest luxuries cars and whatnot and all that type of stuff like that, it's just there is a murky water period, uh, a line that needs to be crossed when it comes to how much you're supposed to give a person for that child support. Support the child. Okay. So, yeah. so here, that that here's the line for. about here. Here's the argument about child support. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's the difference between when you take your car to get worked on, there's two different costs. You're going to have parts and labor. Child support is parts. Yeah. I'm okay, so, then, so then when people argue over the amounts, there's labor cost involved in the part. So you might pay for your kid to go to private school. Well, who's taking the kid to school? Who's feeding the kid every day? Who's driving the kid to school? Who's picking the kid up when they got sick? Who's taking the kid to practice? Who's picking the kid up from practice? So I'm saying there's a labor involved in raising children that is outside of the parts, right? So somebody might say, I paid for this. I paid for this. I paid for this. I paid for this. Wonderful. That's a blessing. I'm a child who grew up without child support. But there was there's also labor involved. Guess what? If your child is with a custodial parent and you're paying child support, that custodial parent has so many more sacrifices and responsibilities than you have just for sending a check. So there is a lot that is involved in the cost of raising a child. And it's not just a, a pack of diapers and some shoes. Well, it's, one of us has children. It's involved in raising, but I, but and you know, I don't have children because I know how much that's the most important thing anybody in the world will ever do is raise children. And so you can't, you can't minimize that to a dollar amount of this is what it costs to raise a child. All I'm saying is there is a line that gets crossed a lot of times, not with everybody, with certain people that when they feel like this person's making that child is not your check. Your ch that child is, and they treat it that way. And there are a lot, I'm not saying these two ladies in, in Tariq Hill's case, whatever, I'm not saying a lot of them all, but in a lot of ways, there are women and men who treat children like that is their check. Like this is an 18 year investment plan. And I got them. And a lot of reasons why they get pregnant, some people get pregnant is because they say, oh, I got them. We've heard the stories before. I got his ass. That's why they, why do you think they get, so I'm not even gonna go too far in the rabbit holes. I know and we're again, running out of time. And again, they, they can definitely say I got him, but the only way you can get somebody is if they put their peen inside of you and ejaculate while you and I understand he's responsible. So he's responsible for that. So that's all. It saying. still it's just like, goes back to that. Yeah, it doesn't matter uh, 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 what the woman's motive is. He's still responsible for it. Okay. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right. Unless she stole Any a condom out the trash can and use a turkey baster. <laughs> and I haven't heard that be alleged, well, then he is responsible. That's, that's Some women have done thing. that. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. So unless that's what he's alleging, which he hasn't, uh, then that's not what we're talking about in this situation when we talk about Tyreek Hill. We're talking about he has sexual relations and impregnated a couple of people. Okay. And so it doesn't right. matter what their motives were. They could have Googled his net worth right before he came over. He is still the one responsible for making that baby with and, that person and, on and, that day. And, and, uh, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying That's that. That's it. Well, then we're good. I'm, we're I'm, good. I'm, I'm talking about Tyree intentions. Talking, okay. All right. So it is time to wrap up another show of the uh, Done There Been That podcast. Once again, follow us 
on social media. Our YouTube channel now is at Done There Been That. So you can send those comments. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys I have. I'm really looking section. forward to seeing. The and comments so here's the thing. Episode. So what we're going to start doing that we're going to start we're going to start reading some of the comments at the beginning of each episode when we kind of recap the last episode. But right before we go, you know how we do it. Our newest segment that we have is um, oh, don't do that. Stop doing mm -mm. that. Don't do that. Got some stuff off our chest. Stop doing that. Stop doing. What you got this week, Eunice? All right. So this has been a theme for you and I, but I think it's a theme for social media. Stop listening to defend versus comprehend. I think we are in a world, in a society, people read a headline and then they go in and they don't really understand what is it we're talking about. Um, I mentioned it a little bit on our last episode about people who misheard something I said acknowledge they misheard it and still double down on it. So I would encourage people, the only way we're really going to grow as a world, a country, a society, friendships, relationships, partnerships, is to just listen to understand what that person is saying versus listening to combat it with a retort or response to say, oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know you felt that way. Oh, that's interesting. Not, no, no, no. That don't mean it's like, see, you're not listening. So I see it mostly on social media. Um, where people just want to be loud and wrong sometimes versus, you know, let me just listen. I can learn something sometimes. Okay. You said something. Your turn. I, can't, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, stop doing that. Um, just stop it when it comes to social media and the responses out there. You can say what you want to about me. I don't care. I'm, I'm a big boy. I got a tough skin, thick skin. So you can come for me and say all you want to. Just don't say personal stuff out of place. If I'm talking about a sports team and I make an opinion about something, you don't know me to call me out of my name and say things. Don't say things on social media that you would never freaking say to my face because in the entire time that I've been on the air in 29 years, on all, all the phone calls, the letters I used to receive, the emails, all the social media posts, all the hate and disdain that I get out there in the vitriol, I have not had one person ever, and I'm not I'm knock on woods, I'm not asking for it, to come to me and say uh, any of that stuff that they say on most social media to my face. And I know they're out there, but they've never said it. So if you can't say it to my face, try not to say it on social media, especially if it's personal. Now, if you disagree with what I have to say and you want to come back, that's fine. And please, bottom line is, I won't clap back. I won't say anything. Usually I'll just block you and keep it moving. But if you say something out of line about mine, my children, or my family members who didn't ask to be brought into this, don't get hurt. I'm not threatening violence. I'm not saying that. I'm not condoning violence. But if you're asking for it, you can get it. Just like my man, uh, Marcus Spears, had to put out something on social media about his sister getting it or whatnot. Don't get it twisted. Don't let the light skin and the suit and tie fool you. All right? I am from Bessemer, Alabama. Bottom line. Here I he think go. Here he go. Yeah, Stop doing that, y'all. Stop you, doing it. You, you can disagree with somebody without attacking them personally. That would be a wonderful exactly. art for us. To just there it is. Everybody take Stop a class. doing that. All right. Stop doing that. Been yeah, there. No, done done that. Been there. We've been all over today. I always uh, I enjoy our moments. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget also follow us on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us in two places, the Inflection Entertainment YouTube as well as Done There Been That. Go subscribe today. And, and our personal Instagram as well, IG, uh, Twitter, at It's My Kill, I-T-S My Kill. And you, you just got your own name, don't you? I'm just a government name on social media kind of girl at Eunice Elia on all socials. I'm very easy to find. If it doesn't say obituary next to Eunice, it's me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keep doing your thing. Stand up. Both of us is out here. I got a stand up uh, coming up. Uh, t it's coming out Wednesday. So I got a stand up uh, performance on Wednesday night. Eunice, hopefully you come check me out in Inglewood. Okay. We'll send me the information. <laughs>